I paint, and uh, if I see something, literally see something, I change it. Uh, I always have my indie ink around and my brushes and whatnot. This is a finished canvas, but I know darn well if I have a little darkness in there and something to break it up there. And the reason I'm touching the, I'm seeing these spots right now. Okay, I back off. I'm glad I did all three. But I couldn't tell you what I was going to do before I did it. But I could say there's something missing there. There's an equality. There's the sameness and whatnot. Whereas a line like this breaks it up. But if I do it over here, then uh, in here, it would take away from that. I don't need it. I don't know. That's it, but that's the end of the canvas. But there's a big difference between this and what it was a minute ago. And I just, a little while ago, uh, had to go through over un almost 100 canvases of mine that were done sort of in a frenzy over the last maybe three months or so on, and I hadn't inventoried any of them. And I was, I was really complaining, oh, to do this and put numbers on and all of this, and it's not painting. I put a big table here in the living room and went through every one, and I was glad I did. There wasn't a canvas that I didn't do something to. And that's also painting, you know. It's like what you're going to do with your family or a child, you know, before he gets a little older and so on. You do something or try, anyway. What caused me to paint it in the first place? I don't even know that. As I start, I don't know what I'm going to be painting for you guys later on in that large canvas. I could guess it's one of about five or six things because of the five or six things that represent life to me. So uh, it might be people, it might be a group of people, it might be a bull, which is man, and a lot of things like that, a horse, which is freedom, or uh, a pueblo, which is where people live, or a seascape, which is nature, or mountainscape. I don't know. We'll see. But I still, in the painting and developing, I mean, life goes on. Every minute of life is life. What you want, or what you're doing, or what you don't want to do, or, you know. I mean, a hundred decisions every ten minutes, I guess. And painting is part of that. All right, it doesn't make any difference who it is. You find a mate. And hopefully it's a long time deal and it's extremely close. And you find what you want to do and you love it. You love your mate and you love what you want to do and you're involved and it's a full involvement. And then where you want to live, what you want to go to sleep to and what you want to wake up. Well, you find those three, that's about it. <laughs> I don't know where it's going after that. Then it's the family and teaching them and bringing them up and keeping them safe and alive and let them be free and all the other stuff that goes along with, but mate, work, and where you're gonna live, and all the rest is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I think. All right, that's enough of that. These I'm gonna get off the wall because later we're gonna put up a canvas outside in here, so these are finished. Paintings are very tough. They're not to be misused and whatnot, but they're, they can take a lot of handling. Picasso used to say he wanted them in his racks and everything hanging around for five or ten years before anybody even saw them. So they gathered some grime and some dirt and some just usage in life. And then it, it didn't mellow the thing out but it took the awareness of a new fabricated thing away. And he's absolutely right, I find the same thing. To be used, just like we are. It's marble. It happens to be second century AD, so it's 2,000 years ago. It's Roman. It's actually the hand of a child who's holding a rein. You can see the rein here. And the rest, and the reason I know this, and it's very rare you can pin things down like this, nor is it important, I think. 
but the rest of the statue is actually in a town in southern Spain on the Mediterranean. I know where it is. It's called Estepona. And this, after I go, will go there. They know it, and I know it, and so it'll be reunited with it. We found it in a place called uh, Casaris, which is, again, uh, up from the Mediterranean. Casaris itself is beautiful Caesar. Well, Casaris was a Roman outpost back 2,000 years ago, and there's still a Roman road going up to it. Uh, and it was one of the pueblos in 1962 when we first got to Spain that we visited. And this is one of the reasons we got involved with archaeology and the Museo Hollander and time and whatnot. When we're wandering over this hill, Barbie's going like this and kicking some rocks, and she kicks this thing, which was face down like this, and it goes over, and, ooh, what's that? And you lift it up, and it begins, what's that? Well, you ask in the town, and you ask in the capital of the province, and you go to the museums, and you start looking back and forth, and you get very informed in time. Uh, this is amongst the first of some over 5,000 artifacts that we found during our, well, it was the first 15 years in Spain, actually, 12, 15 years. And eventually, in 1982, we started a museum of archaeology at our cortijo that we had built. And the museum is still functioning in the local town. We had given it to, to the uh, property of the town. Anyway, there we are. Uh, and when you touch it, I touch it, I'm back 2,000 years. I, it's my blood, it's your blood, it's all the same people. Uh, uh, maybe not direct in relationship line, but if they're Spaniards and we're living in the United States, there's a big portion of the United States that came out of Spain. It's Iberican, the people who, it was the Iberican Peninsula, uh, Iberia uh, were people from North Africa. Uh, the Phoenicians were traders. Uh, the Iberians were those who settled in uh, southern Spain doing mining, uh, pulling out a lot of gold and silver as well. And uh, they were the people there before the Romans. Romans came in and big, big battles took them over. This is a knife. Pretty clever, huh? Thumb around here. And it's still a lethal weapon today.